The Supreme Court has nullified the election of Emeka Ihedioha and has declared Senator Hopu Zadima winner of the March 19 governorship election in Imo State. And 50 years after the Nigerian Civil War, can we say that Nigeria and its citizens have learned their lessons? This is Plus Politics, and I am Felicity Ezewike. Welcome to the program. In a unanimous decision by the seven-man panel delivered by Justice Kudirat Kekiri Ekun, the Supreme Court has nullified the election of Emeka Hedioha and has declared Senator Hopu Zodima winner of the March 19 governorship election in Imo State. The Apex Court declared this, stating that a vote due to Senator Uzodima was unlawfully excluded from the 318 polling units and be added to his votes. Joining us to discuss this are two gentlemen. Francis Chilaka is a political analyst. Thank you very much for joining us. And of course, we have uh, Dikbo Olayokun, journalist. Thank you very much for joining us. Uh, you were laughing. I mean, this, this wasn't what we actually wanted to go with, but it's a breaking story and it needs to be touched on. Were you surprised by this uh, ruling? Um, well, to, to, to a large extent, I am shocked. I'm, I'm, still, I'm, still, I'm still in pains. Um, not because... Um, Emeka Hedua was removed, but <clears throat> because of the fact that looking at the eight years of misrule by APC in Imo State, mm -hmm. and then you're giving us APC once more, it doesn't add up. We, we need a fresh breath of life in Imo State. And to a large extent, in the last few months, Emeka Hedua was at the verge of giving the Imo people this new breath of uh, fresh breath. So um, bringing hope on board now, uh, I... I, I I don't really know where how emo lights are going to take this. Let, let me take a reaction first before we start asking multiple questions. What did you see this coming? Yes, maybe until towards the end of last year or in the first few days of this year. Because if you have studied the political history of Nigeria since some of us started following politics and then reporting it. I think this is the first time the Supreme Court will annulled an election result. It is the first time. I can say it categorically and emphatically. In 1979, when Alaji Shehu Shagari was declared the winner by the then Ida Fedeko or Nek, I can't remember, then the matter got to the Supreme Court. And there was supposed to be a handover from General Basunjo to a civilian government of Alaji Shehu Shagari on the 1st of October. And the Supreme Court ruling was given on the 28th of September, three days to handing over. A year after, a justice of the Supreme Court, Justice Graham Douglas, was attending a seminar and he was delivering the paper. He was a member of the Supreme Court. And he said, I might not be able to quote him verbatim, but what he was trying to say was that there was no way the Supreme Court ruling would have gone otherwise, except that would have been what he called constitutional crisis. Because they were just about three days to handing over. That if they had annulled the election result, what would have happened? Who would have taken over on the 1st of October? So since then, if you have followed the trajectory, the Supreme Court ruling or is seen more as, as politics than law. And that is why I say, if you study the history of Nigerian politics, even in 2015, take River State as an example. The tribunal, that is the court of first instance, annulled the result, annulled all the senatorial elections, annulled all the House of Assembly, all the House of Representatives. The matter got to appeal court. The appeal court upheld the tribunal judgment. Unfortunately for the senators and the House of Assembly, House of Reps, their matter ends at court of appeal. But the governorship election, by virtue of the amendment of the Electoral Act, went as far as Supreme Court. And Supreme Court upheld that judgment. So people believe that if, if River State election could be upheld, going by what we witnessed in 2015, that there was no election that Supreme Court were annulled. So this one coming now, especially, maybe we go religious now. I was, as I was driving, I was monitoring the, the, uh, the social media. And some guys were already casting aspersions on Father, Father 
Umpaka, who either towards the end of last year or first week of this year, first week of this year. Was, talk, was like a salmon. I said him with people. I saw hope. Hope is coming. We'll, 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 we'll come to that conversation <laughs> a little later. Let's let's face the, the, the facts of the issues here. We're being joined by a legal practitioner, Laborious Oshoma, and he'll be sharing his legal perspective on this matter. The Supreme Court has decided. Do we have him on the phone now? Thank you for yes, joining us. Yeah, my pleasure. Okay, what is the implication of this ruling for the Imo people? It's clear now, the Supreme Court has ruled. It's the final court of the land. And so once it's ruled, the decision is final. No matter how unfortunate it is. So that, that, that's, the, that's the implication. My guests in the studio have talked about uh, their, how they saw this coming, and the other one said, no, he didn't see it coming. I'm putting that same question to you. Did you see this ruling coming? Uh, the moment uh, I heard the father, father Mbaka uh, predicting the, the outcome of a judgment that he is not a party to, and then the events that later unfolded from yesterday and today, it was clear that there was something in the offering. Uh, Ucho Wosu of the AA, if you remember in that election, he came second with 190,000 votes. Wopu Dima came fourth with 26,000 votes. Abga Ifanya Rarume came with 114,000 votes. And I'm so when Ucho Wesu withdrew his appeal, I knew that, you know, there was some form of um, something in the offing. And I wasn't, um, I wasn't surprised, really, uh, with the judgment. Even though I would not, as a lawyer, stand here to say that uh, I can I can reason that it might be about law, but I would wait to read the body of the judgment. All right, before we let you go, I'd like to ask the question about INEC releasing, uh, give, issuing a fresh certificate of return to the new governor as declared by the Supreme Court, uh, Court Hopu Zadimma. Do you see that happening? Yeah, no, definitely. The Supreme Court has made a pronouncement. The law is what the court says it is, and not the, the, what is stated in the paper. So what that means now is that um, Imo will have a staggered election from now on uh, because the, the new governor, the new governor's tenure will start to come from the day he's sworn in. You know, unlike um, the previous uh, uh, governor. So that, that's basically what is going to play out. But it, it's, quite, it, it's quite unfortunate because I listened briefly with, uh, to, your, to the guest in the studio. He was talking about um, Supreme Court judgment not being about law, really. If, it is, if, if we want to support that uh, assertion, then there will be no need for anybody to take any matter to the Supreme Court. If it's about um, uh, uh, anything but law, it is the highest court of the land. It should interpret the law because if you look at if you look at the the the, the vote to really, if we say that the maker behavior has did not get the required spread of two thirds of the entire state, what would have been the appropriate? Set for the Supreme Court to, to do. Is it declaring somebody who came distant fourth as the winner of the election or ordering a re election in that state? Because what we, what, what we, the Supreme Court has set a new precedent here now. You can score uh, 20,000 votes and not have the required spread, and yet you'll be declared a winner. By, by the court. That's, that, what, that's the confusion that I'm facing here with uh, basically what, is, what, what I'm seeing here. That's why it took time 
to explain, to also give the figures as they were uh, um, uh, as they were read by INEC when the results were announced. But unfortunately, the court has spoken, and it is the court of the land. Okay. It is uh, what the court. Paddy, you said what? Yeah, in in summary, what what do you how soon rather do you expect to see uh, the details of this ruling? Because a lot a lot of persons are already saying there is something not quite right. Yeah, like I said, there's, there's uh, uh, definitely a lot a lot not right here. I would have expected for for a, a judgment such as this. I do not expect a situation where the Supreme Court would be given reason later. I expect that the judgment ought to be ready. The moment it's read, even though there is no appeal on it, that the parties should be availed of the copies of the judgment. It does not mean that because the Supreme Court had spoken that they are not infallible. Analysts can look at it, lawyers can look at the judgment and begin to point out areas where the Supreme Court had erred, even though they are the final court of the land. Like the 1979, I want to want Shagari case that the guests in the studio referred to, even though that, that court was, decision was given by the Supreme Court, this judgment was seriously lambasted even when it was given. And the Supreme Court later overruled that same judgment. Because it wasn't a judgment that was given on the basis of law. And so we should also not su support Supreme Court to give judgment on anything apart from the position of the law. I doubt if this also will stand the test of time. Thank you very much for your thoughts on the program tonight. <coughs> My pleasure. All right, back to you. Let, let, me, let me go to you. He picked on some of the responses you gave. For do you have anything to say to him? No, nothing to add because at least he didn't um, dispute the claims I put forward. Because <laughs> I've been a journalist for a very long time. I've been following judiciary matters for a very long time. And I have developed politics, the interest in politics for a very long time. But I think liberals will have to avail himself the opportunity of reading the judgment. Because like I told you, while I was coming, I was monitoring the thing on the social media. Though at times when you <coughs> pick information from there, you have to be circumspect in holding on to it. The moment they said the court, that is the Supreme Court, has accepted the result from 2018 bowling units, it was being reported live as David those guys, and that they had gone into the recess to go and compute figures. So for you uh, liberals to be saying that person came forth, I wonder where he got the total number of votes that Tara Rumi, sorry, uh, Hope Uzodima got at the end of computing results from the 380. I guess 300 we'll have to polling. wait for the, what, yeah, yeah, the yeah, details yeah, yeah, of yeah, yeah, the ruling. I mean, yeah, yeah, on change. that score, you both agree. Yeah, yeah. So let's, let's, <laughs> let's come to you, Francis. You're not happy at all with those ruling, but let's look at the implication for uh, the people of Imo State. We're just getting used to a governor, and then this happens. It's going to be um, really disheartening for people of Imo State. But then, <clears throat> like um, the, the lawyer said, um, the Supreme Court has taken a judgment, and the Supreme Court is the last um, court of the land. Um, it simply means that we would all, um, we all have to embrace the new governor um, and say, hope was Odema, congratulations. That's the way life is. We all have to move forward. You know, but um, what can we do? What can we say? He has been declared a winner. So just like Emeka was declared a winner earlier, we all congratulated him. So we're also going to extend the same hand of friendship to um, Hope Uzodima. Uh, we just hope that um, he doesn't uh, be like the name Rochas used to call him, Hope is Hopeless. We only hope that Hope would come and you know, be the light which um, um, <clears throat> the Reverend um, Father Mbaka talked about. We hope that he would be the light to take Imo people to the promised land. Okay, you, 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 let me just allow you to speak about this Mbaka prophecy that seemed to be intriguing. Is there, I mean, does he have a foresight? Should we be 
crediting such um, comments in conversations like this. Maybe there's a need for us to step a little bit into the, back into the future. As we were preparing for 2015 elections, some big weeks in PDP yes, and the wife of the then president visited Fred Father from Baka. Normally, political leaders in that part of the country always go there. If you have a following the history, I remember the time there was going to be an election in Anambra State, Ngige was standing as ACN candidate. Then there, there, were, there is this, the former governor, Peter Obi. The two of them met at the Holy Ghost ground and then they clashed. Adoration ground. I beg, sorry, I thank you, Adoration ground. Because people, are, politicians always go, always go there. So before the 2015 elections, they went there. I think it was uh, the dep dep then deputy senate president who took them there. And the man welcomed them. He spoke with them happily. And then he prayed for them. And they left. I think they gave him some gift which he rejected. No, he didn't. No, 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 no. Okay. He didn't. Uh, what truly? But let me come. No, no, no. Let sorry. What okay. transpired? You need to wrap that uh, up okay. quickly. What happened was that after about five questions. days, mm. the man came out and said he started praying over the, the then president, Jonathan. And that he wanted to release some doves normally. And those things refused to fly. He pushed them, he prodded them to fly. They didn't fly. And so he and came out the making projections day. on and that. No, the following day he came okay, and I, I just wanted you to air No, just to let us know why the, the prophecy that he made last week rained and then took over the airways. And people were waiting, especially because of Imo State. They were waiting for Imo State because of their Reverend Mbaka prophecy. And the man told Nigerians that he tried to gas God, and God told him that Jonathan was not going to win the election. And eventually, Babu already won. And this well, one has come I, I, Well, so, the people uh, went and I, I, voted I need, I need, and I need, things. To add, I need to add this. I need to add this. Um, Nigeria is a secular state. We need to be very careful. I just wanted you we need to, to be clear very, very your careful thoughts. Because, because, it, because such prophecies, like it has happened in the most state, could lead to something nobody can control. All right, let's 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 move on and talk about other reactions to this uh, ruling. This reaction was before the ruling. Let's talk about the reactions after the ruling. Um, first, Oscar Yamo, uh, a minister in this administration, has come up to highlight something. I saw it quickly before we came on on the program. He talks about the fact that this judgment coming on the heels of the Zamfara nullification. This affirmation is a clear testament that the judiciary is neutral. He said, at its very best. Let me take that question to you, Francis. Well, what do you expect Kiyama to say? What would you expect anybody who is a minister in this government to say when an APC candidate has been declared a winner of an election. Yeah, but he is, he is talking about the neutrality of the judiciary. That because, the, of course, you will agree that there's been conversation in the media that because this administration, um, that, that this administration possibly is influencing the judiciary. Well, what has played out in Imo State, a lot of people will look at it from that point, from that perspective. You see, because when, we'll still come back to Mbaka. Because no, when, can we just no, kick him out of no, the no, conversation and him, no, talk no, about... No, you cannot leave him out of the conversation because it was like he had given a judgment before the Supreme Court. And that is why I say we must be careful when people, give, when people tell you they're giving prophecies. Especially, it's like somebody telling you your marriage is going to break up. It's, and the marriage breaks up. Let's no, get your perspective. If we want to be sincere with ourselves, I'm talking as a neutral person, you might explain maybe there are biases, I think the Nigerian judiciary, to some extent, is very, very independent. Under a dictator, there was no way APC would have won all the seats in Zamfara, won all the governorship candidates, the senators, and the court from the first court, second court, to the, to the Supreme, uh, Supreme Court, who, with a wave of hand, just annulled all those elections. Those, some of the people that were sworn in as members of House of Assembly, members of House of Representatives in Zamfara State, they did, not even they did not even campaign to contest for election. They just fulfill all righteousness by putting their names there. And the Supreme Court said, yes, based on the law, APC, you didn't follow what the electoral act is in conducting your, local, your, what they call it, your primaries. The Supreme Court would have hid under the provision that after all, it is the party that will produce candidates. It is the judgment of the court that it is the party, and whether the party produces is the candidate of the party. But Supreme Court says, no, even if the party will produce candidate, you must follow the due process. The same thing happened in uh, River State. As we speak today, the 
like, I don't know if I call him the past or the current chief whip, no, majority leader of the House of the Senate. His receipt was annulled by the same court. If you have followed, be following the Senate, they have been using acting majority leader, acting majority leader, because the person who is an APC person, who won the election, who was sworn in, who is might as the majority leader of the Senate, there is a court says no, oh boy, go and go for your own. So I, I don't know what we is, what else we want from Supreme Court. Yes, there could be some prodding from not even only government. Some lawyers are very close to some judges. One senior lawyer says some lawyers know law, some lawyers know no judges. judges. So I, I think uh, until we get the full details of the judgment. But the moment I saw it around after five, that the Supreme Court had gone on recess, and they have accepted results from 318 polling units, multiply 500 by 318, and know the number of votes that will come in, and then maybe you can do your computation. I'm afraid that's where we're going to have to stop it for now. Thank you so much, gentlemen, for sharing your thoughts with it's us. It's a pleasure. All right, we'll go on a short break. And when we return, what lessons have we learned from the Nigerian Civil War that took place 50 years ago? That will be our conversation. Stay with us.